Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In our gospel lesson today, our Lord was tempted by the devil, and this temptation was a test. And what I want to do today is talk to you about the meaning of this test, what it meant for Jesus, and what it means for us today. Now, one way to understand the significance of this passage is to set it within its broader context. Now, just immediately, before this passage, Jesus was baptized. The Spirit fell upon him and God said, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. And immediately after our passage, Jesus begins his public ministry. So here's the sequence. Jesus is ordained for ministry in his baptism. He is then led by the very same spirit into the wilderness where he is tempted by the devil. And after this, he begins his public ministry. And so what this shows us is that Jesus' temptation was a test to prove him worthy of his calling. God allowed him to be tempted by the devil. Now Jesus' test was severe. He had to prove that he was able to fulfill his mission, and this mission was to save humanity by living a holy life and dying in our place. But because this was a great mission, a severe test was needed to prove Jesus worthy. At the beginning of history, Adam failed his test and so brought death upon all humanity. To save humanity, Jesus would have to pass a test that was far more rigorous than the one that Adam had failed. You see, Jesus' mission was to beat the devil. And he was to beat the devil by living a holy life and then dying in our place. But before Jesus could beat the devil for us, he had to beat the devil for himself. And so Jesus whipped the devil twice. The first time he whipped him in the wilderness for himself, and the second time he whipped him for us by dying on a cross. Now to beat the devil, Jesus had to prove that he could withstand any temptation that Satan might throw at him in the future. And so he was tempted in three basic ways. He was tempted with regard to his body, with regard to his mind, and with regard to his will. 
And these temptations were real temptations. In his humanity, Jesus did not know in advance that he would succeed. First, let's consider the sins of the body. We are really familiar with bodily sins because that is the way we are normally tempted. And bodily sins include such things as lust, drunkenness, gluttony, sloth, etc., etc. Now, the devil did not tempt Jesus in all of these ways. He didn't have to. He chose the one area where Jesus was most vulnerable. Because Jesus had fasted for 40 days, he was really hungry. So Satan tempted him to use his divine power to turn stones into bread in order to satisfy his own personal hunger. But Jesus answered Satan in terms of scripture. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Second, Satan tempted Jesus with respect to sins of the mind. Now, sins of the mind include things such as pride, arrogance, conceit, envy, jealousy, hatred, contempt, etc. So this second temptation was directed at Jesus' ego and possibly his insecurities. The devil told him to jump off of a pinnacle of the temple so that he could show off his divine power before others and maybe even prove it to himself. But again, Jesus answered Satan in terms of scripture, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Finally, Satan tempted Jesus in regard to his will. Now sins of the will include such things as covetousness, deceitfulness, treachery, the urge to dominate. Satan told Jesus that he could have worldwide power if only he would worship him. And again, Jesus answered Satan in terms of scripture. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. In all of these cases, the devil tried to make Jesus trivialize his divinity by using it for selfish ends. And in every case, Jesus answered the devil in terms of scripture. Jesus did not respond in terms of his own personal feelings or reasoning. This would have given Satan an opening, just as it did with Adam and Eve. Instead, Jesus answered Satan by means of God's authoritative word. For us, Jesus' victory over the devil is good news because we face the same temptations that Jesus did. We too are tempted in regard to sins of the body, sins of the mind, and sins of the will. In regard to the body, we often shy away from things which threaten our ease and comfort. We refuse to speak the truth because we are afraid and sometimes we are so wrapped up in the pursuit of pleasure that we forget about God entirely. In regard to the mind, we frequently give in to our pride and arrogance. We think better of ourselves than we ought to think, and then we look down upon others with hatred, contempt, and conceit. We do not love our neighbors because we are too busy loving ourselves in a wrong and twisted kind of way. Finally, in regard to the will, we often seek to dominate others due to our lust for power and control. Sometimes we scheme for their possessions because our hearts are covetous. And if we try to s climb the ladder, we might smear others and destroy their reputations. In all of these ways and many more, sin gets the best of us and we fail to stand up to it. But Jesus did. He was tempted in every way that we are, but without sin. And for us, this is really good news because it shows us that Jesus was able to go the distance. He was able to live a holy life and die on our behalf. 
Every day we battle sin and every day we fail. But the good news is that Jesus Christ has battled sin for us and he is able to restore us and get us back on our feet again. And this, my sisters and brothers, is really good news. Thanks be to God. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise for the hymn of the day. <clears throat>